They say the first step is admitting you have a problem. Hey curators, welcome back. Today I have something fun and exciting, slightly different to share with you guys. So I normally on my channel don't show acquisitions because I feel like sometimes that can feel a little bit like bragging and or uh, consumeristic. It feels like you're being sold something and I never wanted to create that vibe here on my community. But it's been about two weeks since I last sat down and talked to you guys and to be quite honest, I, like everyone else, have been feeling drained and feeling the side effects of anxiety and stress and that has just kind of left my crafty mojo a little low. And so rather than sitting down and, you know, sharing the little bit that I've been working on here and there, I thought it would be fun to sit down and show you guys my coring schemes. And what's that you ask? Well, my corn skeins are everything that I have purchased since April of this year. And it's shocking how much it is as I look at it scattered across the bed in front of me. And as you might've noticed behind me, my cabinet looks particularly low. And that's because I pulled all my recent acquisitions out to show you guys. And it's a lot. It's a little embarrassing, but at the same time, I thought it would be really fun to show you guys what I have been buying with Reckless Abandon lately. So also part of what prompted this video is about once a year, I like to go through my stash and call out skeins that I'm either not super in love with anymore or just... I know I'm never gonna use them, so I would rather destash them, sell them, and put that money towards either future purchases or I really have discovered that I really like shopping at festivals, so putting that towards my travel budget or, you know, festival budget. So I was pulling things out and, you know, I thought that this would just be fun to share with you guys what I have been acquiring since the world changed in late March. And like I said, I'm a little embarrassed, but here we go. I'm also a sucker for a good sale. So yeah. This has also made me realize that I, during this time I have reverted back to old buying practices. So I used to shop predominantly online uh, just because there weren't that many yarn shops around me and it was a lot easier to buy something and have it sent to my house rather than going in person. The other advantage to online shopping is that you can often get yarn at a good price because a lot of different retailers have sales and things along those lines. And yeah, so not having, you know, a trip or a festival to budget plan and account for has meant that I have reverted back to old ways of shopping for deals. And there's nothing wrong with that no shame in that game. It's just made me realize that I have probably spent more than I normally would have because there were some opportunities that I could not pass up. And so yeah, without further ado, we'll jump right in and I'm actually going to start with fiber first. I've actually recorded this video once already and I ran out of storage on my phone mid recording and I accidentally permanently deleted the original recording. So I'm working in reverse because everything's scattered in front of me in reverse. I recently, Zoe a couple months ago told me to start following the handspun hashtag on Instagram. She said she was finding a lot of vendors under that tag for fiber that she really liked. So one of the ones I found is called Lazy Livin' Fiber. And this is a targi bat with little threads and wool nets in it. And it is everything I love, which is a good neutral with pops of color. And the vendor behind this yarn on her Instagram has been showing the process of spinning this bat. And I loved the finished yarn. So I jumped on this. I got eight ounces of this fiber. 
I'm hoping to be able to make either a shawl out of the finished yarn and or like a hat and some mittens. And I just love Targi. It's probably one of my favorite breeds to spin and to work with. I thought it was, I was expecting like two big bats, but I think she probably has a drum carter about as big as mine. Cause I got these four little mini bats and they're great. I might, might even do a four ply with the way the fiber is broken up. Half the work's done for dividing it. So I do have a little bit more fiber to show you and some of the fiber you've already seen. Uh, when a lot of the protests this summer first started taking place and there were efforts to amplify black voices and black makers, one of the ones I found through that process was a fiber artist, I believe in Atlanta. Her company is called Twisted Urban and I had never seen her shop before. I think she's relatively new, but uh, she also makes bats and that's probably my favorite preparation. And so here's her card. So I actually bought these two bats. They're called snack bats. I think they're only one or two ounces of fiber. And I bought these to use as future giveaway prizes on the channel. So the first one is this really pretty purple colorway. You guys know purple is my favorite color. So of course I jumped on that. And then the other one I got is this really pretty peach like sunset cloud looking colorway. And I really, really like a lot of her colorways. She does some really interesting color combinations that are right up my alley. And another thing I really liked about her Instagram and following her on Instagram is that she often shows the process of her building the bats, which I think is really interesting to see a sneak peek behind the scenes of how people layer colors and create you know the things that we then turn into yarn. So really pleased to have found her. I did also buy a metric ton of fiber from John Arbin. You guys have seen that on the channel but I think in total I probably bought like 1100 grams, which is probably like, I don't know, two or three pounds worth of fiber. A lot of that has been processed and worked into my Jupiter crop. So if you're a regular follower, you've seen those. I'm not going to show them off on here because my phone is still on a limited storage crunch. Ah, uh, yeah, the struggle is real. <laughs> Next up is Yarn that I did not actually purchase, but when lockdown first started, a lot of people were doing almost like pay it forward. And so in one of the Facebook groups I'm in, the Dyer Behind Art and Alchemy Fiber Arts, she did a random giveaway and the prompt was like, guess a number between one and 1000. So I used my uh, area code for my phone and it turned out to be good for something because I won two skeins of yarn. Yay. Uh, so these are both DK weight on her Superwash Merino base. They're each 260 yards. So this one is the colorway Lavender Dreams. I believe this will probably grow up to become a pair of uh, mittens and or a hat. Most likely a hat is what I've been thinking. And then this second one is called Partly Sunny. I believe this is gonna be a self-striping yarn. And I have debated giving this to my sister Zoe, who has the Felicity Yarn Studio channel because she really likes self-striping yarns and I don't know what I would do with this. So I will burden her with that of figuring out what to do with this yarn. And it's really cute. It's got really fun pops of color in there. I don't know, it could become a hat as well. Maybe some mittens, dare I say, a pair of slippers. Maybe if someone else wants to knit slippers. So yeah, I won those and I think they're super cute. So one of the things that definitely, I mean, y'all over there in the UK, in the EU, you got my number. 
this summer because a lot of places offered discounted shipping. One of them being John Arbin, which is part of why I made such a large fiber purchase because his shipping was half off. And quite honestly, I've had a large quantity of stuff in a cart for over a year now that I've wanted to purchase from his website, but I haven't because the shipping was like $35 or something like that. So anyways, with the discounted shipping, I went ahead and took the plunge because that took it down to like 15 or 20, which totally made it worth it. Um, but I did buy a sweaters quantity of his a DK Viola base. It's the same yarn I'm using in a cardigan for Mr. Yarn Curator, but I got it in the Shepherd's Warning colorway. It's this really pretty purple mauve with a gray and blue undertones. And I had originally bought the gray yarn to make the Mira sweater by Fiber Tails. I didn't really love that color for that pattern. And so I had since gone back on his website, you know, since purchasing that and saw this colorway and thought it would be perfect for that pattern. So I have now taken the plunge and repurchased the same base in a different color for the same pattern. And I have five skeins of this. Excuse me, I'm drinking Diet Coke because it's hitting the spot right now. And I am a Diet Coke addict and I haven't had it in like a month and it's beautiful. Uh, also from the UK, I did splurge on uh, one skein of Amy's Charity Colorway, which is Don't Touch Your Face. I really, really liked it. Thought it was really pretty. Uh, love the splashes in there. I do think this is going to become a hat as well. And yeah, I usually only buy... DK weight yarn when I'm going to make a sweater. I usually don't buy one offs of it. So I think this is too bright and busy for a sweater's quantity, but I think it'll make a fun hat uh, and then maybe a matching cowl, depending on how much yarn is left over. We're just going to keep going with folks from the UK. Uh, I, I teased this earlier, but I am a sucker for a good sale. So Cosmic Strings Yarn is a dyer based out of Edinburgh and they put up on, I believe on their Instagram is where I saw this, that they had a lot of yarn, like, like final skeins that hadn't sold on sale. And so I saw these two skeins of Afternoon Treat is the name of the colorway. This is a 75-25 blend and there is 464 yards. So it's this really pretty, once again, neutral with a pop of color. So it's got this peach and blue, and it just had my name written all over it to come home and grow up to become something. And I'm not quite sure what yet, but it's enough to make a pretty shawl or use it as the main color or contrasting color in a color work sweater. So yeah, I really, really like this. And this is probably one of my favorite indie dyers. I've got a few, but they rank up there in my all time, like top 10 indie dyer. So when they had a sale, I kind of had to jump on it and the shipping was really affordable at that moment in time. I don't think the international rates had gone up yet for the U.S. So next up is should be titled, I am a sucker for a good sale via Jimmy Bean's Wool. So for those of you who do not know, Jimmy Bean's Wool is a local yarn shop based out of Reno, Nevada. And on their website, they have like a constant flash sale running called Wool Watcher. And you can find it, just type Wool Watcher into Google and you'll see that portion of their website. Anyways, they have thrown up some things lately that I just could not resist. One of which, when all of this first started in April, uh, I noticed that they were putting up uh, Bishazi Boosh. This is the same yarn 
that I knit my poet sweater out of and I noticed that they started to put this yarn into the cycle of Wool Watcher and so I just had my eyes out for the right colorway to pop up. I was actually working from home but every we had a rotation for my job where all of us would go into the museum just check to make sure that there weren't any signs of foul play on site uh, and to keep up with routine cleaning and maintenance, those sort of things. So I was actually in the middle of our grounds at work with like a broom and a rake in hand and I saw this pop up on Twitter and went and scooped up six skeins of this yarn. It is the off-white or ecru colorway and I used four skeins for my poet, so I know that's going to be more than enough for another garment. And I have actually already broken into this to use one skein, probably two in the long run, for my woodlark shawl, which I'm currently knitting as part of Zoe and I's hashtag Steak Along 2020 cow that we're running right now. And yeah, I had originally planned to hold this double with some undyed angora that I have and make something along the lines of the No Frills or the Basic Raglan by Hohi Locatelli. No Frills is by Petite Knits. Um, I know Jesse May has a raglan design held with a mohair so that's maybe the plan with this. I might use the mohair for some or the angora for something else. I haven't quite made up my mind yet. So yeah, I scooped up six skeins of this for under $50. So to continue on the Jimmy Beans trend, uh, one of the projects I have been dying, that's dramatic, one of the projects I have really been wanting to cast on is the Garden Gate sweater, which is a pattern by Jennifer Steingath. It has this really pretty design in the yoke and so I have had my eye out for yarn for that pattern for a while now. I had bought previously, which I'll show you in a little bit, some other yarn for that pattern but didn't really like it when it came in the mail and so on Wool Watcher again these skeins of or this color of Manus del Uruguay popped up. It's the eggplant colorway. It's a really pretty dark plum purple and this is a 7525 base with 445 yards and so this is going to be the, M the main color of that future garden gate and I'm thinking I'm going to hold it with one of these lighter colored skeins here in my stash. I might hold it with this kindred red here in as well that I purchased earlier this year and showed off on the podcast. Maybe not. I've been, Zoe and I have been chatting about doing a swap because she likes this colorway. Not more than I do. I'm just kind of lukewarm towards it. Uh, but I do like those together. So we'll see. Sorry, Zoe. But yeah, so I scooped these up and I think that is going to be the main color for that sweater. One of the nice things about Jimmy Bean's wool as well is they give you like, like a loyalty credit every quarter. So you get a small percentage back of what you spend. So I used a little bit of my store credit uh, to get these for a little, just a little, it was like $4 less, even though they were already on sale. So I think I spent like $45 on these three skeins. I'm a, like I said, I'm a sucker for a good sale, you guys. Also on Wool Watcher that helped con contribute to that store credit in addition to the beaches is I, I had originally bought this skein of Anzula. It's their MCN base, so an 80-20 or an 80-10-10 merino cashmere nylon in the navy colorway and this I originally was thinking would be the contrast color in the yoke for that garden gate sweater. I had envisioned like a really, well I had envisioned this which turned out to be a little different than I was expecting, a peach body with the navy contrast and 
So this came in, it was a little bit darker and duller than I was anticipating from the picture online. I thought it was going to be a little more bright and vibrant of a blue, but it's still really pretty. I actually might just de-stash this skein since I don't think I'm going to use it in that sweater and I don't really need it. And I'd rather get a little bit of money back in my pocket than hang on to something that I'm probably not going to use. So along those lines, when I was trying to pick out my garden gate, I really like less traveled yarns. I think, I don't know the name of the dyer, but the, the lady behind the brand, I think she just, she has an eye for putting color combinations together. Her dye jobs just look exceptional. And so I have been wanting to make a purchase from this dyer for probably two or three years now and I've never pulled the trigger because I do really like to buy yarn in person. It is my preferred method of purchasing yarn. And I was on her website and noticed she had a colorway called Devil's Bridge. I'll put a picture in, but she only had two in stock. Uh, so upon further inspection, you can purchase a sweater's quantity and you just put in the colorway that you would like for the yarn. So I bought four skeins of the Devil's Bridge colorway and it's a little bit different than I was expecting. It's a little bit more darker and saturated. I was expecting a little bit lighter of a peach and not as much variegation. I wasn't expecting as much of the blues and purples and greens in there. I was expecting just a little bit more of a tonal yarn uh, that's, like I said, just a little more subdued. So I don't think I'm going to use this for my garden gate. Clearly I bought different yarn for that. I'm thinking I'm either going to make a, like something like a boxy or the pavement sweater by Vera Valimaki. That's just, I can alternate the skeins, let the colorway show off, let the yarn do all the talking and just a nice simple silhouette um, because I feel like this is going to be busy enough as it is on its own. So yeah, and I have to say this colorway is outside of my normal comfort zone of what I would buy for myself. And that's something that I've lately have been trying to push myself away from from buying what feels comfortable and it's nice to give myself some variety as well because you know sometimes you can get a little bored with a particular palette so my stash was I think that's part of it my stash was feeling a little stale and so it was time to liven things back up and introduce some new colors into there and kind of on a theme because it's a lot of dark purples dark blues a lot of like coffee cream latte -y colors a lot of peaches and then um, I'm currently on the hunt for the perfect emerald green because I really want a nice emerald green jumper. Maybe out of mohair or with mohair in it. I'm, I'm obsessed with the texture of mohair right now which is awful because I live in Florida. So to continue on with the less traveled yarn about two or three weeks ago, I went up to visit my aunts who live about an hour and a half, two hours north of me. And they had a new local yarn shop open called Pan Banged Knits. And I will stick some film footage in of that at the end of the video. I had meant to do it in my last podcast episode and totally forgot. But I went up there and this was actually the first yarn that I picked out when I walked in the shop. Once again, it's Less Traveled Yarn. It is on her 7525 base and the colorway is called Koi Coral. And I got three skeins of this. One has fallen on the floor. It's this really pretty like ballerina pink peach, nice and bright. So I have been wanting to make the Love Note sweater by Tin Can Knits probably since about the start of the new year. And the one thing that I've been waffling on with it is, do I wanna make it held with the mohair or not? And I like the look of the lace along the yoke better with the mohair held with it. 
and but at the same time I kind of want a lighter version of that garment to better work with where I live and the climate I live in and so while I was in the yarn store they actually had a sample knit of the love note uh, and a much tighter gauge out of a fingering weight yarn and I really liked that so I will probably be making the love note out of this and it'll be nice because it's going to give me a nice fun bright punch of color into my fall wardrobe. I really like that. That's really sweet. I also still might default back and hold this with my white Angora which will tone this down a little bit and I think that'll be really really pretty. Uh, so I've also been leaning towards that. I don't know. I need to decide. I can't use the Angora for everything. While I was at the yarn store I also picked up two skeins of this Cozy Color Works. This is a new to me dyer. I have not heard of them before and what I really like about this yarn, aside from being incredibly soft, is it's incredibly generous in its yardage. You get 555, 550 yards per skein, and it's this really pretty coffee cream color with just delicate orange, black, and brown speckles. She had another colorway in the store that was like a really dark chocolate. I waffled between the two because I like them both a lot um, and I think the dark chocolate would have looked good with my skin tone but I just just loved this colorway so much more so I went with what I love and I advise you to always do that. So that was my little splurge last month. And then last but not least is uh, around the holidays last around Christmas last year New Year there was a local yarn store in the in Michigan, I believe, called Wool and Honey, and they were offering a $25 gift card to anyone who would sign up for their email newsletter. It's part of a holiday promotion, you know, no obligation to purchase anything to get this $25 gift card. And so I have been sitting on that gift card for eight months now um, and I finally used it. I couldn't decide what I wanted to buy, whether that would be yarn or fiber or a tool or books or, you know. So I have been obsessed with Cormo, which is a type of wool since discovering, discovering it, feeling it for the first time at SAF last year. And I picked up these three skeins using my gift card. And this is definitely, these two particularly, are out of my usual color palette and comfort zone. I don't know, all of y'all knitting out of yellow and gold in this color are rubbing off on me. So this is the tobacco colorway. It is a worsted weight yarn. Each skein has 50 grams and about 100 yards. So I got two skeins of this like scrummy yellow brown gold and then one skein of the same base in the briar colorway. Now now jewel tones are right up my alley. So originally I was thinking I could hold them together and make a hat or some kind of color work cowl. I might eventually just buy a little bit more um, to give me some more options because this is feeling very FSU inspired at the moment. So that is all of my purchases that I've been making. I really need to get back and being accountable because if I had not bought all of that yarn, my goal of stashing down would have been pretty well accomplished for the year. And some of the stuff I've bought, I've already started knitting with. So I don't feel too bad about splurging because I do work hard and it's nice to be able to treat yourself. But I do need to get back into a routine of primarily shopping in person and part of why I like shopping in person is I usually buy a little bit less uh, because I am able to filter with my own eyes what I do and do not like, what colorways I'm really attracted to versus, you know, shopping online and it's like, ooh, I like that and ooh, I like that. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little mini haul and being able to squish vicariously. And until next time, I hope whatever you're making, knitting, spinning, crafting brings you joy, and I will talk to you later.
Bye.